Honorable mentions. First up, I once again have some honorable mentions for you guys, but way more this time around. Bowl over, slot car derby, tipsy tourney, bumper balls, and even number one favorite facelift from the Mario Party 1 list have returned, and much like their MP1 equivalents, they are still some of the best in Mario Party 2. Bowl over gets a player the second to throw, which adds a little more depth to the game. Bumper Balls has three different courses that each have their own unique attributes and obstacles. Slot Car Derby and Tipsy Tourney are pretty much the same gems that they were before, and Facelift allows you to now pull on the faces of the other playable Mario Party characters, so you can finally give Peach that much needed and more fitting change of facial features. However, I did not want to have a list that was one half returning minigames, so these games will be scrapped from the list for the purpose of showing off some original games, and some games that didn't quite make the list in Mario Party 1, but made significant improvements in order to make the list this time around. Number 10, Hexagon Heat. Those who have played Mario Party 1 will immediately recognize this game not as Hexagon Heat, but as Mushroom Mix-Up. However, this time around, you are not plagued by aqua-dwelling bloopers, but straight-up freaking lava as Toad lowers the hexagonal platforms that are not the same color of the flag he's holding. Your goal is to be the last one surviving in a game of get the hell to that platform, and with three players trying to do the same exact thing, it can be pretty hectic minigame. However, it's the good kind of hectic, the kind of hectic you would expect in a straight-up competitive Mario Party game. You have to give this game props for what it's doing right. Number 9, Hot bob -omb. Hot bob -omb is another game that also existed in Mario Party 1, but like a few other games on this list, so many things were done to make this game a more worthy contender in Mario Party 2. In the first version, there could only be one loser, and the first player the bomb explodes on will be that the only person losing coins. In this version, it goes straight up battle to the last man standing, and that is the way I like it. Another thing I like is the implementation of having to catch the bomb with the B button before throwing it, preventing and stopping the mass spammage of the A button. You are at the mercy of the bob bomb in this game, as it's the only thing in the game that's timed, and it's a timer that you can't exactly see yourself. You only have your gut feeling to go off of, so if you want to be that person who purposefully holds the bomb until right before it explodes before throwing it, be my guest, but don't come crying to me if you mistime it. Number 8, Platform Peril. Once again, we have another game from Mario Party 1. Now imagine if I left the other games on this list. Yeah, exactly. But like Hop Bob Bomb, Platform Peril is another game that gets massively improved with its changes. In the original game, you have to jump from platform to platform till you reach the very end of the course, but all the platforms were the exact same length and size, and every platform randomly had a wall obstacle to avoid as well. This time around, there are many other obstacles at your disposal. Conveyor belts, shifting platforms, smaller platforms. It's like going from the kid's meal to the adult feast. Some may say that these changes make the game kind of difficult and at times really hectic and chaotic, but I think personally makes for a fun time as well, which is why it manages to make an appearance in this list. Number 7, Look Away. When I first saw this game, it was hands down one of my favorites. Not really because of gameplay or the premise, but just the random visuals of seeing heads of Mario Party characters bob back and forth to a very happy tune. In this game, the single player must look in the same direction as the other members of the team of three. Every time he looks in the same direction, that player gets knocked out. Once all three players are knocked out, the single player wins, but if he or she cannot eliminate the entire team in five turns, the team wins instead. This can actually be kind of tricky for the single player, because it all comes down to either luck or really fast eye-to-hand coordination. But it's still a fun game and a treat to play, watch, and listen to whenever it comes up, and that's why it managed to get on this list for me. Number 6, Bobsled Run. I guess I'm thankful that a large majority of these returning games appear on the bottom half of this list, but I'm even more thankful for how I handled the list this weekend, because I was really disappointed that Bobsled Run just barely missed out on being on the list last time, being rank 11 on a top 10 list. Of all the returning games on this list, Bobsled Run is perhaps the game that gets changed the least amount. In both games, it's a simple bobsled race down a snowy and icy hill to the finish line. However, unlike the Mario Party 1 equivalent, this one does have a lot more going for it. For one, the course is a lot tougher and there are more sections where one or more of the walls are missing. 
Two, there are more speed boosters this time around as well. And third, although more of a visual change than anything, you actually slide down in a penguin sled. Now that is cool. No pun intended. Two teams racing to the end has always been a pretty fun staple in the Mario Party series, and this game is one of the few that started it all, so I'm glad that it actually managed to make a name for itself and make one of the lists in the process. Number 5, Sky Pilots. In this game, the two teams of two pilot their own flying air machine, and the goal is to reach the finish line first. One member mains the wings and the accelerator, and the other one does the navigating and turning. What results is a game where teamwork really starts to come together in a very profound and magical way. You can't just have one without the other because it's just not going to work. The person controlling the wings must keep moving at all times and moving in a very fluid and harmonious motion to get the most speed as possible. Meanwhile, the navigator must make it his or her priority to not only avoid all obstacles and impediments in their path, but also navigate through the rainbow boost that can give their team a huge boost of speed when they might need it the most. You can't have one roll without the other, and I think this game is the best example and showing of that, maybe in the entire Mario Party series. Number 4, Filet Relay. Okay, I'll admit, I freaking love penguins, and when I first saw this game, I was enamored in a way that just made me want to unlock and play this game non-stop. In this game, the single player races the team of three to the end, both sides wearing the most adorable penguin costumes imaginable, while carrying a fish to feed the other penguins at the goal line. The solo player must take on the entire journey by himself, while the team of three has checkpoints where they toss off their fish to the next player in line. It may seem like the solo player is disadvantaged, but at each stop, the team must endure a 2-3 to three second handoff, which can give the solo player enough time to catch up if they are behind. Each team pretty much has to deal with the same exact obstacles in course layout, so it's a pretty fair race considering the circumstances. It all comes down to how fast the solo player can get used to the controls and if the team of three can capitalize on any of the player's mistakes in the process. Overall, it's a very solid game, but I personally just can't get over how freaking adorable these penguins are. You know, in the Golden Lands of Olympia, I was proclaimed the god of the penguins! They're just so damn cute! Number 3, Lights Out. Bash and Cash, I hope you're watching and taking notes because this is how a 1 vs 3 minigame should be. I like to think of this game as a sequel to Bash and Cash where the player in the Bowser suit finally gets his vengeance as he is the one with the hammer now, while the other players, now with light bulbs, scatter away in fear for their lives. The thing I like about this game is just how balanced it is as a minigame. After a period of time, the arena's lights will go off completely, with only the light bulb showing any source of light. This leaves the solo player in absolute darkness, but every now and then the lights will come on and allow you to see where you are. This means if you are the solo player, you need to have a very good control and instincts when plagued by the dark, having a good idea of where you are at all times, but also trying to interpret where your opponents will go next. As for the team of three, it might be a little challenging to avoid the hammer strikes, but it is definitely possible and your goal should mainly consist of trying to find ways to fake out your opposition. Hands down, I think this was one of the best 1 vs 3 minigames ever created. It's simple, balanced, but still a lot of fun to boot. Number 2, Hot Rope Jump. Once again, the Mario Party 1 minigame that barely missed out on the list last time, but did a, all the right things in this game to propel it almost to the first place position. I'm going to level with you guys here. Hot Rope Jump would have made the list last time, but the only reason it didn't is the fact that the game pretty much had a limit forced on it. After 20 jumps in the original game, or after one player screws up, the game would just stop and not continue, which is actually kind of a shame because I would have liked to see how long everybody would have lasted in the full length run. Thankfully in Mario Party 2, the limit was removed and the game goes until the last person survives. And let me tell you, there is definitely no limit because I've once made 200 jumps with someone in this game before, and my god, that was a really intense battle. It seems like no matter the scenario, this game just gets really hype and really fun the longer it goes on, and I really enjoy when a game can get that competitive. It really makes the reward seem all the more worth it, even though it's only 10 coins every single time. Number 1, Shellshocked. I might be playing to the fan favorites again, but Shellshocked is just a really fun game no matter how you look at it. 
Everyone takes control of a small tank and proceeds to fire at their competition with a combination of stray shot and lob shot cannonballs. Sometimes the course will be a real trigger fest where the fastest draw will win, but in some other maps the course will be completely covered in pipes, forcing you to be a bit more strategic as you look for cover and that perfect lob shot for victory. I think another thing that helps this minigame is the fact that you take two hits instead of just one hit, because if it was one hit, yeah, that would be kind of lame considering in some courses one of the other players is usually right in front of you from the very start. It's a very adaptable to any situation. If a player is too far ahead in the main game, team up against him and take him out ASAP. If you are being targeted by everyone, play defensively and let them play into your own trap. It's the type of game that Mario Party does best, and I think Shellshocked is the, perhaps the best example of it. You think that game takes skill? I fought Cerberus five times on the very peak of Mount Olympus with my hands tied behind my back. It was challenging, but I did survive eventually. Well, that's going to do it for the minigame episodes. Join me tomorrow when I take a look at the Mario Party 2 boards and give them my own personal ranking from best to worst. And don't forget to join me after this weekend for Mario Party 3. It should be a great time, and I'll see you guys next time. Later, folks.